Can people hear us? Are we out there, Xvala? We're out here. We're out here. We're tuning in once again, one week after the last, here on a Sunday night. The week after Easter, when we had a uh, pretty wide-ranging discussion here on the Meme Ranch, talking about a number of things. The Christ is King controversy, uh, what Joe Biden did on Easter with its... Uh, transgender recognition remembrance day whatever that crap was and we're sort of bringing in the continuity i think a little bit here with this uh weekly show that we've started here with talking about the candace owens ben shapiro controversy once again not for any meaningless you know hype beast garbage droll but because we're actually looking at a possibility that candace and ben shapiro might debate if they can agree on the right venue. Uh, I guess is that is that the last the last that you've checked in on it, Exvala? It seems like that they just can't agree on where to have this debate at. I mean, I remember a week ago I said this should happen before it was even floated as an idea that the legit the legitimacy of like people who follow more more on the Daily Wire side they would want to see this and it should be seen. You know, we should we should clear all the controversy or maybe create some new controversy get these two uh powerhouses at, at loggerheads and let's see the sparks fly uh speaking of sparks flying i do like andrew schultz's take on basically his view of the daily wire and probably how it's viewed by most of the people out there yeah schultz had a in- interesting take on this i think that he really got more of the uh mainstream crowd that's not just locked in on conservative twitter 24 7 talking about this because you know people have their brackets so to speak of like how much intake they get of ben shapiro or tucker carlson you know some people who loathe or despise those types of people still get information about them so i feel like andrew schultz is kind of like one of those mainstream guys that gets a lot of a lot more of the zeitgeist thinking about um things like this like this like beefing online and so so to speak and it definitely makes it more uh light-hearted more meme worthy i would say because so many people on the right take this so seriously and at the end of the day i think most people should know that uh it is I, a lot i mean i can i consider it to be pretty pretty comedic all, all of this in my it is a lot of money we're talking about though yeah, there's there's a lot of money. Apparently, Patrick Bet David wanted to uh, raise some money for uh, charity uh, over a potential to host this debate. But uh, yeah, let's let's dive into Andrew Schultz and what he had to say about this because it was pretty. Hey, we before we play it, let's uh, show him my my addition to the uh, debate. Oh yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. This is this is a great. Uh, <laughs> this is this is this is a great uh, version of Andrew Schultz that we uh, that we just kind of put this together before, before the show. We are like, if this stand-up needs to happen. He needs to go out as Gomez. I think I think it has a potential for his next Halloween show. Potentially, mm-hmm. uh, I think I, th- I think he, he could he, he could make it work. So Gomez uh, Schultz. Yeah, that's it. That it's pr- it's pretty striking, honestly. But yeah, let's let's pull this up and see what he said. The, the Schultz Gomez Shapiro debate. I actually haven't seen this. Media, it's mm. very easy to go. Look at New York Times. Look what you do, and look at Washington Post. Look what you do, and you're censoring free sh- speech. You're for censorship. In this conversation, he makes the argument for censorship. He calls it something else. Yeah, I forget the term. I have it in my phone. But he, I don't even think he's using the term right. But he's basically like, there's a window. Of ideas we accept. Yes. And we accept ideas between this. We're talking about uh, the this. Window. I guess this is, if I get window, you're looking like this. So we accept ideas between here and here. And anything outside of that window, well, you're fireable. That's censorship. What? But yeah. he's acting as if this is like a justified reason for firing people when you built your identity and platform off of no censorship and freedom of yes, speech. And yeah. Facts don't care about your feelings and all this shit. It's also funny that that window happens to end where his beliefs end. I am Isn't that interesting? Well, you're that. not being pro-Israel. That's where the window ends. That's what? also your specific personal belief. What? So. That's a really good point he made right there. That, that's a really good take. What? Yeah, the fact that uh, he they point out that the censorship's allowed. The Overton window begins where Ben Shapiro's ideological principles set. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think that probably that came about over time. Uh, I think that you could say it was always there to begin with, sort of. But I think that over time, once they racked in all of the subscriber base for the Daily Wire, and I'm sure that, you know, it, it's growing each month. But, you know, there was a time whenever it hit a peak. And, you know, those are just the people that follow you that that that, that want to watch that type of content. So I think for a while it became that. And then once the Daily Wire started branching out to try to hit more of those Venn diagrams of different cultural spheres, um, I think that we started seeing more pushback on that. God dang it. Turn off your dang phone in the movie. It's not. <laughs> it's, it's on my computer. It's. Oh, OK. Well, uh, my my point with all that is that, you know, we saw for a long time that the Daily Wire, I think, had a little bit of a uh, safe space community uh, almost formed by its own subscriber base. And then by trying to reach out more, they, they are they are inherently trying to do that by uh, interviewing OnlyFans uh, stars. Um, mm hmm. I think that you start to see people like Andrew Schultz, you know, weigh in a little bit. And I, I, I do think to, to push back a little bit, not just, you know, be like, you know, rah, rah Schultz. I think he does mischaracterize a little bit of this. I mean, I think that first I Wait, where at play that, play, play that part if you can. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll go back and I'll, I'll play this if I can. Uh, let me see if I can go back a few seconds back when he was talking. This, uh, this, I guess this is, if I get window, you're looking like this. So we accept ideas between here and here and anything outside of that window, well, you're fireable. That's censorship. What? But yeah. he's So we don't even have to get to really the core of what he's saying. Um, you know, he might, he might be talking about what he feels like, he, you know, what Ben might say about somebody like working for a corporate environment who expresses certain views. They're like, oh, maybe they should be, you know, barred from working there. Maybe we, we, we can impact that. But if he's talking about Candace here, I th I really think that Candace basically let her contract expire. Uh, I think that she tried to do this in a way that it didn't have to result in her fire. I think that Jeremy Boring probably did this, you know, in conjunction with her was like, how can we make this a non-fireable kind of thing? But it still didn't take away the veil of this whole thing, which is the core of what we're talking about here is that it seems like. The Daily Wire cuts off certain points of view, uh, certain points of speech, which I can, uh, which I which I do sympathize with that that idea, uh, but I do think that Candace was essentially like chose chose to let her contract go. I, I'm kind of curious, Caitlin, what do you think about how this connect the dots for me between Crowder's attack, I guess you'd say, or uh, angle on Con Inc and Daily Wire, and then Candace's pushback on that, and now juxtaposed to where Candace is at now. Was she wrong the whole time? Reel that back for me one more time. We're, we're, we're talking about... It's a position Candace took mm -hmm. regarding Crowder when Crowder was labeling Daily Wire Con Inc. She attacked him. Tell me more about that, because I actually wasn't paying about paying too much attention to her responses to that i don't know exact words but basically she acted as a uh, sort of like the attack dog you know mm. use metaphor against um crowder when crowder exposed daily wires contract and that was that was before october 7th right i mean i think it was a year ago yeah so yeah it was before all this so yeah but i mean i think i think that she probably was acting a little bit more on behalf of daily wire as the institution a little bit there like you know being an attack dog for it and then suddenly you know even matt walsh i think that you know there's a um there is a relevant video that he made recently where he was talking about um a little bit of this free speech thing he was talking about the texas executive order uh, that was uh, in regard specifically to a certain kind of speech that he was telling um, other state schools to adopt the um, a, a specific version of the definition of anti-Semitism for these schools to sort of make their own. And Matt Walsh was essentially saying, like, why do we need to have an executive order for this? Um, and some people were, you know, getting... You know, we're, we're, we're saying about Matt Walsh, like, oh, he's, he's going to be next, you know, but 
I don't think so. I mean, I think that what Matt, Matt Walsh was saying is, I think, honestly, something that Ben Shapiro would probably agree with. At least he should agree with. But Why would you say Shapiro would agree with that? Because I think that Shapiro has to stand on the principles of free speech at this point if he can at this point, which is skeptical. The whole argument that Schultz is making, he does not stand on the principles of free speech. I get that. I just think that I think that Ben would probably lie through his teeth if, if, if he had to, because I think that what what we're seeing here is that we saw that, you know, old Ben where he was like, Israel can defend her, can defend herself all the way to now where he's saying, this is why the U S needs to step in and be defending uh, Israel, you know, or in, in, in whichever way that is, like sending arms and things like that. So, I mean, we have seen Ben change over years in his different sound bites. And I think that he would probably try his best to say the executive order um, is something that should not happen. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to pull up this clip real quick. That, uh, good, good. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's what I that's what I wanted to kind of flash here. Um, people are pegging this uh, video from Matt Walsh just firing back at Ben Shapiro. The reason why I don't latch on to, uh, you know, like trying to like read the tea leaves in the same way that some other places places do is, um, I just think that not everything is like, you know, tongue and code. Uh, I mean, it can be, but. I'll get to what I'm trying to show you guys here, and then you guys can be the judge. Uh, let's see. In reality, to be anti-Semitic is to hate Jewish people because they are Jews. That's what anti-Semitism is. Everything that is not that is not anti-Semitism. You could say a lot of other things about Jewish people. that You could make a lot of other statements that are incorrect. You could even say things that are offensive. But unless they express that you hate Jewish people for being Jews, they're not anti-Semitic. Just like being racist against a particular race means that you hate the members of that race because they are members of that race. And again, you could say a lot of other things about people of a certain race that maybe are incorrect. You could even engage in stereotypes. You could say you could you could be, you could have misapprehensions. You could have you could have misunderstandings. You could, you could say a lot of things. But unless you're expressing that you hate these people because they're members of that race, it is not racist. Now, I realize this is the narrowest, most limited definition of these terms, and it's also, it's also the only coherent and clearly delineated definition. If you expand it beyond these boundaries, you will quickly find that now there are no real boundaries and anything can be included. So, what if somebody says something that is really clearly anti-Semitic? What if they, they stand up and they say, this would be the clearest version of all, I hate Jews. What if they said that? Well, there's no denying that such a statement is anti-Semitic. Sure there there's is. There's no denying that, that likely statements like that have been made on college campuses. It's Should there be an executive order or law prescribing punishments for such expressions? No, of course not. If a person hates Jews, they should be allowed to say so without any legal repercussions. If they hate black people, if they hate Asians, if they hate gay people, if they hate Christians, if they hate white people, if they hate me, if they hate you, if they hate anyone for any reason, they should be allowed to say it. And 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 they are allowed to say it. So what I what I'm saying is I think that because the Daily Wire is all under the same publishing ecosystem, I think that Walsh, maybe not on Ben's side with hundred percent of the things that he says, but Ben gets the benefit of the doubt of being able to write off of what one of his co-hosts is saying and be like, Oh yeah, Walsh, I, I agree with him. You know, not saying that, you know, basically Ben doesn't have to say any of this. He just gets to point at Walsh and be like, I agree with what he's saying. Why and, is he saying it now? Yeah. I mean, I think that's a good, that's a, that's a, that's a good thing to bring up again. I'm, I mean, I would have been more interesting for him to say this a week ago, two weeks ago, when the whole uh, crisis king was an issue and people were questioning motives more. Mm -hmm. now it comes after Candace has left. I don't understand. That to me just smacks of covering your ass. Yeah. I mean, that's what I, that's exactly what I was saying there is like, you know, 
hey, my fellow co-host, can you put out a pretty good monologue, you know, about this issue? After, after the controversy is gone, so to speak, and there's like nothing to be saved from from by doing this, it's completely safe to act like this was our position all, all along. Yeah. Yeah. I want to go back to this Andrew Schultz thing because I think that we cut off that pretty early, but uh, there's, there's still got... There's there's still some more stuff in there that we could probably unpack. So let me get that ready to go. But yeah, if you guys are watching this right now, give us your thoughts. We want to know what you all think about this ongoing. Uh, what would you even call this? I the like the uh, totality. The totality. Mm-hmm. The 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 total eclipse. The Daily Wire. Andrew Schultz. Totality. God dang it. It's acting as if this is like a justified reason for firing people when you built your identity and platform off of no censorship and freedom of yes, speech and yeah. facts don't care about your feelings and all this shit. It's also funny that that window happens to end where his beliefs end. I am Isn't that interesting? You would say well, that. not being pro-Israel, that's where the window ends. That's what? also your specific personal belief. What? So. I just so don't you see. you can't have an opinion on your platform that is not pro a country that is not ours? Hmm. Yeah. Wait a minute. It's crazy. I wish So I, is I the Daily Wire time. an American media platform or is it an Israeli Ooh. media platform? <laughs> I'm just asking. This guy's cooking. This guy's I'm just asking. Going. Get the, yeah, get the, get. I'm just, no. If, if the Duh. rule is, I'm just saying, if the cooking. rule is you cannot be critical because he has no problem being very critical of America. Yep. Sure. Critical of the left in America. Left sure. is half the country. You have no problem eviscerating half That's of the, the country. That's the current power in party in power. But you can't criticize Israel as a country. That's just another country, unless you're saying and you're clearly admitting that the Daily Wire is an arm of the Israeli, I guess, media or propaganda machine. For Wait, is that? Oof. Are you manipulating the the religious right in America? Are you manipulating Ooh. the right-wing conservatives in America and Talk selling them shit. country western movies and putting on your little cowboy hat and fake moving to Nashville so that you two could take all their money and then in the process restricting free speech, one of the core tenets of the American identity? Ben, Ben, Ben. Oof. Benjamin, Ben. What is happening? <laughs> There's trouble in paradise. <laughs> <laughs> what shall we do? Dude, what's wrong? Are you going to bring this up? Yeah. Don't help us yeah. with this whole situation. Yeah, I, I don't like... want this to be true. I want to believe that the, 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 the Daily Wire is the last bastion of free speech. Yeah, that's thought, what I want to believe. I thought he was absolutely free term. speech. Right? That's that's what I considered. It wasn't he? I feel, like, I feel like the framing is all a little bit too convenient for uh, Schultz on this thing because it's like, I still don't know. It seems like a lot of the talk right now has been given a lot of oxygen, you know, for, for people to be talking about like this. And so my, my whole thing is like, I feel like every time there's like this, like question of like whether free speech is like in jeopardy or like whatever, all, all I can do is like point to situations right now, like what's going on in Brazil uh, with their whole free speech issue and, they're um like I, I don't even know like i don't i don't know i don't know the politics of brazil good enough to like you know really extrapolate on this point but i just know that there are things like such as like uh talking points on x that are in jeopardy of being censored uh on brazilian airwaves internet whatever you want to call it my 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 whole point is like i feel like we're all able to have this discussion and say the things that Schultz wants to say. And like, would you be able to say them on the, on the Daily Wire? Probably not, because their hosts aren't going to entertain those kinds of ideas and viewpoints. But the point is now, it's like Candace and Tucker can talk about whatever they want, you know, as far the, as this the stuff point, goes. The point that's the reason this is a even a point of discussion is because, you know, it, it's not that it's only the idea of controlled opposition. And I'm not saying it is, but it does kind of have that effect. And it's probably maybe unintended consequences. But when people get too much power, they become corrupted. And maybe you just have to look at it from the point of view, is the Daily Wire becoming corrupted? Is the fact that they're coming out with this, you can say whatever you want, it's not harmful, two weeks later, evidence of corruption because it doesn't really address anything in a timely manner. 
it, it's kind of after the fact triage and the fact that uh, Candace had to leave in the way that she did in the way Shapiro went around <clears throat> uh, doing all the shows talking about it and she didn't. And then going back to the Crowder thing where Candace attacked Crowder. I don't know. I'm just, I'm looking at it from the point pr perspective that daily wire has built quite a network of conservative viewers and, and subscribers. So we're talking money and we're talking attention. So they're getting, they're, they're soaking up. They're like monopolizing the attention and the narrative of what can be, it's the same thing that you see with, uh, you know, in the art world, there's only so many narratives that are allowed within that world. Daily wire has a large foot, print in conservative ink and they control a lot of the narrative and i think all these people who are on the outside kind of throwing rocks at at the daily wire machine they're they're asking is this okay do you, are you guys monopolizing too much of money and attention of the conservative movement yeah i think that uh what, what you're going to see is like, you know, people move with their wallets and I think that we'll see if there's actually going to be someone who gets replaced in Candace's spot or maybe there won't be anyone and we'll just kind of see like a shorter roster, you know, hanging around there uh, or they'll try to elevate one of their current sort of smaller uh, talents to be the next bigger person in the seat. I have no idea, but I still I, I still do think that there is like a little bit of grandeur things happening um, about this. Like, you know, we can we can always point to an invisible hand who has control over the whole issue. But I think that we are still talking about something that is able to be talked about. So the fact that we're able to have these conversations is a clear enough sign that we are still within, you know, our, our freedoms and our, and our rights. So, so, so to speak, I mean, this is coming from someone who doesn't agree with Ben Shapiro on hardly anything, but I still think that, you know, this whole idea, this whole kind of like, you know, caricature that uh, Schultz is making, like, I think he's doing it because it's funny. And I think that that's kind of Same thing Ben does all the time though. Mm -hmm. Not really. I don't see it as it's basically just what Ben does all the time. Yeah. Dude, we have some, some, we have some crazy comments right now going on in our feed. I don't know. I don't know if, I don't know if you've seen it, but there's some, there's this one person who's just like spamming the entire chat. And it's so funny to see this. I wish there was one thing that I could read from UYP because I can, I can hardly make out, any coherent sense of what you're even putting into our chat. It's really funny. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, what, what, what more can, can, can we say about this? I want to, I want to, I want to get deeper into this uh, debate. I mean, will there actually be a debate that we get to see? I mean, I've, I've taken some screenshots here. We can kind of go down the list and read them. Uh, but this was sort of the, uh, conversation that took place before Shabbat, uh, before Ben took uh, took his little social media tea break uh, for the weekend. Read basically, that. I can't read it. Basically, uh, what's going on is uh, Candace is saying that she's interested in having Joe Rogan moderate a debate. She's really interested in like having like a moderator, and then. Ben, on the other hand, is just like saying, like, why can't we just have it on the Daily Wire? Which is really funny because. Oh, my gosh. Get the fuck out of here, dude. Yeah, because. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah, let's let's bring our, our old host back. I mean, I was saying last week how it would be. A good, leave, like, come back and debate. After it, would we be, start. It, would, it would it would at least be better to 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 show that Daily Wire can bring back. Uh, Candace for a future show, even though she's not a host, because it should absolutely be on Joe Rogan. Yeah, it should be the biggest show on the on the planet. But my whole but, but, my, but my whole point that I wanted to finish there is just that that, Tuck, that Tucker would have never been invited back to Fox. 
you know, so that so that is a little bit of, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a key difference. You know, that Tucker didn't even get taken down for the same kinds of issues that we're talking about right now. Um, you know, they they fired him for their own. Yeah, but Tucker was not reasons. They didn't think t- so. It's completely different, though, Kalen, because the corporate media did not think Tucker was going to another corporate media. They, they had a contract lock. They didn't think he was going to go to X. I really don't think so. I think that they thought they had him locked up. Whereas Candace, she started out on the web. She's going to go just, she's going to go to the web somewhere else. So they really couldn't shut her up no matter what. So they didn't even try. And again, I think that's why Tucker has, his format has gone to this interview style. It might, it might be a legal reason, not just a, uh, I want to change the style of my show. Mm. I don't. I don't think they could. They even had a hope that they that Candace is going away. Whereas with Fox, I think they thought they were. They had him in a contract, and he couldn't go do. I mean, he wasn't going to launch a web show. Tucker, that sounds ridiculous. So I mean, I mean, right now we're seeing Tucker going off and just being able to do whatever he wants, and you know that's that. That that's pretty cool. I think that we didn't get to see that, uh, you know, with other, you know, past mainstream journalists who like went off and did things, you know, on their own. John Stossel just kind of went to YouTube. Um, trying to think of other people who have made the the leap to independent work, but um, but Tucker is like a little bit more of like a, of a like a rock star with how he's able to, you know, be anywhere and anyone will will be entertained by him in a, in a room. And I think that Candace, Candace can do that as well. I mean, I think that she'll be able to, you know, really chart her own path. Uh, and the fact that so many people want to see this debate happening is almost like clear proof that she has the legs to stand on her own. I think the stakes of this debate aren't Shapiro and Candace. This is true independent conservative media versus Daily Wire. I feel like that that's where the lines are drawn. <laughs> this guy said, I have one eyeball. That's so funny. All right. I'm about to blow your mind. That's all. That's all I can show you. That's that. That's all I could. That that's the only skin I'll be able to show the rest of this. Show. And no pants. Yeah, and no pants. I'm literally just doing like the whole Zoom, corporate, you know, shirt on top, no pants on bottom. <laughs> we're like we're, we're we're like Kanye says, no pants. <laughs> no, guy. <laughs> no, no, no pants this year. Mm-hmm. Gosh, but man, like, what else, what else can Schultz say to just completely shit on Ben? No. So here's the. His- <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wait, window. Are you saying that he's free his speech? <laughs> yeah. Yes. The exact thing he's been critical of the left throughout his entire career for? His position. Tur- I was sorry, term he used Overton window. Oh, yeah. uh, the Overton That's window, the yes. That's the term. Yes. So I thought the position he took between like platform and, and publisher, I thought was interesting. Because mm-hmm. he's basically saying like he believes that platforms should have free speech because those are town squares. And so like corporate censorship from like Twitter and X or like uh, Instagram and shit like that. Mm. He's claiming that that would be a violation of free speech. Mm. But he thinks as a publisher, you don't necessarily need to up- uphold things outside of your editorial view. Yet he was quite critical when the New York Times fired journalists for publishing Tom Cotton's article. Right. See, he was ready. I didn't know this. This <laughs> motherfucker was ready. I didn't know. I was out. No. I was going to do other things. No. <laughs> now that is kind of, that kind of hypocritical, no? Seems a bit. Yeah. Is to is to be critical of another platform, mm-hmm. right? No, sorry, of another publisher yeah. for firing someone on the basis of their opinion for an op-ed piece mm. because that opinion did not fit in the Overton window. Yet he is firing people because their opinions do not fit in the Overton window. Now, we could vehemently disagree with the people's opinions that he has fired. I'm sure there are plenty of things that Candace has said that we think are horrible. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. But that is not the brand you built, my friend. Correct. 
He also and, claims that it wasn't Israel, though. Like, yeah, that's at, the thing. Is it Israel well, or is it anti-Semitism? We can disagree on that. Like, I'm sure you could go at it with him on this, but he claims at the end that it has nothing to do with his position on Israel. My the reason is, I bring up Israel, the reason I bring up Israel is because he himself has tweeted that. Um, what is that fucking skeleton looking bitch that's in media? Uh, <laughs> the fuck is her name? Uh, Ann Coulter. Ann Coulter. Coulter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ann Coulter. Ann Coulter was doing this thing. <laughs> where instead of calling Jews Jews, she calls them globalists. <laughs> but then she was like, I think Matthew Tucker's half globalist. <laughs> she just, oh, she's funny, funny, man. You know, she kind of got funny. it. She, mean, whatever. That's, that's she's great. inflammatory as hell, but she's funny. So, <laughs> yo, during the debates good. when Vivek and Nikki Haley were going at it, she yeah. tweeted to her followers, guys, don't get involved. This is Hindu business, not our fight. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> it's Nikki Haley's Christian, sick Christian. It's funny, though. Anyway, <laughs> Oh. Yeah, it's so funny. But uh, but what wait, what the fuck was I just saying? Uh, the skeleton. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So Globalist, yeah. he was like, she says in, incredibly uh, anti-Semitic things, but she's pro-Israel, so I can look past it all. Now, I don't think she's working for the Daily Wire at that moment, but that's his <laughs> basically basic position. Hey, freedom of speech is is totally down as long as you're pro-Israel. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess Han is. Mm -hmm. Seems so, mm. Dove. I'm just saying you should be able to. I, what? What? What do you think, Dove? I'll lean to the point of. We're very I, fortunate I to have no, a globalist on this podcast. Exactly. So tell I was, was, was going to say. <laughs> I think the whole Candace thing is closer to a little anti-Semitism oh. play over the Israel thing. He hasn't Sorry. historically been that guy, like the spearhead of like pro-Israel things. I think it's been more of, uh, to your point, it's yeah, the platform it's protecting that. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Can you, can you, can you tell me, I, cause I've looked into it and I haven't found anything outright anti-Semitic that Candace said. Can you tell me some, cause the article she I saw- She liked a uh, 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 very anti-Semitic trope. Which was? I think it was. She liked a tweet. She liked a comment. Someone said that Rabbi Shmuley was drunk off Christian blood That's or something funny. to that effect. <laughs> yeah. And she liked it. And then apparently she had but been like uh, defensive of Kanye. <laughs> I think she's also been like defensive of Hitler. I just, well, she to, like had admired. Like, I, saw I, have, I have to stop this for a second. <laughs> because it's just all about that Rabbi Shmuley guy. And I bet, I bet that guy does get drunk off Christian blood. <laughs> that's the funniest thing out of the world she nailed it right it's like because like if okay i get i get that it's, i don't know i'm just asking i get that it's more like a like, like like a more monolithic you know like uh tactic you know to like say like getting drunk off christian blood like that's like a whole like you're talking about like Jews as a group, not as a person. But that specific guy, that Rabbi Shmole guy, he probably does get drunk off of blood or something because that guy's crazy. Have you seen his Twitter? <laughs> yeah, I've never looked at it. I think I think there's there, there there's a couple of things that we could look up on it. It would be, it'd be pretty good to bring up. Oh my god! What if there's a picture of him actually drinking Christian? <laughs> see, this is see this is the guy that gets ignored. I mean, he doesn't get ignored, but like. He gets backseated a lot in discussion about this because I feel like he's he's the guy on the court, like at a basketball game that does throws the first punch, and then the guy that throws the second punch gets ejected. And no, I mean I feel I feel like he's the guy that's like out there just like waving his wiener in the wind, like trying to like get everyone pissed off. Like and nope, he like, does things that uh elicit a reaction and the reaction is what gets that person in trouble. He's like the he's like the Jewish baked Alaska. Baked is Jewish. Wait, what? I thought he was just Christian. No, man. He's well. I think he's actually. You'd have to ask him. All right. Well, well. You told me he's Jewish. Maybe. I accidentally butt dialed him this week, and that was kind of funny. Mm. All right. Let's pull. Let's pull this up. This guy. This guy's hilarious. He's like on crack. People say hello. I like that. Laurie. My name's Laurie. What did you say to me, Laurie? I said hi. What's your thoughts on Putin's barber? I thought I Putin's yes. what? What's your What's your thoughts on Putin's barber? Wait, did that was that said? 
No, that's that's just what uh, one of our commenters is saying. YP, mm. what's your thoughts on on Putin's barber? Would you, just give your thoughts. Why don't you tell me what your thoughts are? I asked you, or he asked you, and then I now I'm asking you. I don't. Who is Putin's barber? I don't think I know this. I don't know. You know I think I, I think it takes him probably five seconds to do the haircut. What, oh, but what if his hair was like this? This is rad. And the poor dog. What what dog is he talking about? I don't know. You gotta you gotta read this guy's comments. He's just kind of going off. Read them. That's what I'm saying. And and the poor dog. <laughs> I mean, that's this like. If if this is what Putin's barber's doing to him, you know, I think that uh, he's 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 gonna live another ten dynasties. I mean, this is this this is peak. This is peak. Uh, Maybe this is uh, transhumanist Putin. You know, he gets a uh, to be younger again, live forever, and kind of go ska, little punk. Yeah, this is definitely like a. Like I'm not not even cyberpunk, just like old punk, yeah, old, old punk. vintage, retro punk. Yeah, that's that's good. I like that. Um, I think he'd be more popular worldwide if he had that look. It's kind of sick to say. Oh yeah, I wanna I wanna pull up this. Uh, if there if there's any more rabbi, <laughs> why do I say it like that? Rabbi, rabbi footage. Um, okay, yeah, this this one's crazy. I know this one's crazy because I because I watched this one the other day. Um, Is it Schmilly or Schmully? Mm, say whatever sounds right. Schmully. Schmully. Schmuck. Yeah, look at this schmuck out here. Schmully. Schmully, Schmully, ravioli, Schmully. A schmuck on X. Part of the deals yeah, yeah. with a very terrible tragedy that at this great moment of national celebration when the Jews had finally built God's Mishkan, God's tabernacle, the precursor to the temple, and the people who would serve in there would, would of course, primarily be Aaron. Like, what is this shirt his that he's wearing? The two of his sons mm -hmm. were died tragically as they brought a quote foreign fire, a foreign fire to the to God's altar. The foreign fire that we see today is having passion for the wrong things. That foreign fire. It's the man who's attracted to a woman that isn't his wife, or a wife who's attracted to a man that isn't her husband. It's the it's, a, it's the false fire of greed and love of money. So let me just deal immediately with this. I just saw before Shabbat that Ben Shapiro had finally uh, demanded that Candace Owen debate him on his own. I am very proud of the role that my daughter Rachelea played in, for two years. And a lot of people complained about this, but look at the results now. For two years, my courageous daughter Rachelea, who is the number one defender of Israel in the, in the English speaking language on the, on the global, on the worldwide internet at Rachelea, challenged the amical wearing Ben Shapiro, why are you paying Candace Owens? Why do you employ her? It's not that we believe in cancel culture, but at the moment Candace Owens started saying, I love Kanye West and he loves Hitler and that's okay. I'm sorry, if you can't get can if you can't get canceled, I don't believe in cancel culture either, but there are things that are just beyond the pale. No, he is ben arguing for you. Because he fired no, no. It. But when you say, I love Kanye and he says, I love Hitler, etc., and then Candace Owens started to lose it from there. Uh, promoting that Jews drink Christian blood, etc. And all the while, and Israel's genocidal, the IDF are not heroes, they're killers. She said all this while getting a paycheck from Ben Shapiro. Everyone paycheck from Ben Shapiro. This, this whole line of thought irritates me because of, look at what comes out of Hollywood. I mean, I don't hear this guy railing against uh, things in Hollywood that would be against uh, what the Jewish religion espouses. And there's tons of it. Tons of it. Like what? Like a tra transgenderism, uh, transgenderism, I'm pretty sure, is not allowed in the Old Testament. Uh, you would think, but I feel, I, feel, I, feel, I, feel, I feel like there's a lot of stuff that's not allowed in the Old Testament. It says in the beginning of the Bible, like a hundred times, what is a man, what is a woman? I mean, it, and, and like when you read it like 20 years ago, you're like, why do they keep saying this? Why is it mentioned this many times here in the beginning? It makes more sense now in 2024 why it would have been said ad hominem you know so many times in the beginning of the bible i'm just saying like he's picking on uh 
can't we'll just take it back to the current controversy he's picking on candace and he's 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 couching it in the fact that she said some things that he, he doesn't like but but there's plenty of things out there that that uh not this i'm not i should have <laughs> it's not about it's not about that the daily wire makes these things but just as part of uh our ability to have free speech and artistic expression in america we have tolerance for different perspective, dis different expressions. It's okay. And he's just picking on Candace, I feel like. I, lo I love the guy in our comments that's just picking on us. <laughs> he's, he said, gosh, that wind would blow a Texan off his cousin. <laughs> what like is that is that just in reference to our to the way that we're speaking in our mics? Like I don't know. And then transgenderism i think that was that was uh that was a play on how you were saying it. i think i bit my tongue <laughs> well let's let's be real it's a word that we all wish that we didn't have to say transgenderism we wish it wasn't even a a, a thing Ooh. My, my point is is like he's not calling that out yeah i i i i, I see your point why yp is uh Man, you've 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 just been busting our balls all night, man. Thanks, thanks for sticking in the in, in the chat. You know, it's it's an honor to be uh, having our balls busted by you. I don't really know like what else you know there is to talk other than we are keeping an eye out for this debate, and if there is a debate, we are going to be watching and live streaming it because it's kind of coinciding with what we've just been like talking about. Is just like instead of people just whining about there being no free speech, like make the free speech moment, you know, as much as I hate Lex Friedman, he did the whole Norm Finkelstein destiny, that gay debate, you know, he made it happen. You know, if it needs to be Lex, then maybe make it Joe Rogan, make it Patrick Bet David, whoever, I don't care. Make this happen though, because it'd be really funny. <laughs> and, we, and we all we all would like a good laugh we could we could all use a, a, a good laugh uh and maybe we would take away something from it maybe i mean i i don't think that candace would be able to out debate shapiro I, I i just think that shapiro is a little bit he's got he's got he's got the the iq you know it's not that i don't i think i have more agreement with candace on certain things for sure but i, I just think you that played ben, the game to see the results so Right. I don't, I don't IQ is not everything by any measure at all. Dude, this person is is insane. They're schizo. In my day it was woman or in my day it was Wonder Woman. These days it's wonder if it is a woman. <laughs> that actually makes sense. No, it does. It does. I, I just I just enjoy trolling YP because he's trolling us too, and we're all we're all just having a good time here. YP, are you millennial or Gen X? Yeah, YP, tell us your generation. Whatever you whatever you think that is. I'm guessing it's not millennial, but maybe it was. Do you want to see a cool? Um, there's something cool I wanted to show. Let me see if I can pull it up. Check this out. Mm, I've seen that. That's rad. That is rad. In the nineties. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna assume. Well, I asked generation. I was asking if you're a millennial or a zoomer, but I'm gonna, probably born in the mid eighties or something. Oh, he, he he's responding nineties to the generation. Okay, so. So millennial. Yeah. I'm guessing. You don't mean you were a twenty year old in the nineties. Right. Trump is the boss. Yes, he is. He's the he, man. Trump's got so much sway that they put his name on an E V uh E vehicle. Vehicle. Electric vehicle. Oh and nice. Nineties and Irish. Nice. It's in your head. <laughs> Cranberries. <laughs> that's that's what I think of nineties and Irish. Zombie. 
Zombie. Eh. Man. I don't I don't I don't know what else is happening tonight. I feel like that there's just not too too much going on. Um any, anything that you saw this weekend that was crazy? Have you seen that Kong versus uh mm. Godzilla film? No, no, I haven't seen it. Are you into those films? Are you are you Sometimes. into those? Yeah, I'm kind of curious to watch it. I know everyone's hot on Shin Godzilla, Shin Godzilla, and I, I keep wanting to start watch it, and I just can't. I wanted to see Godzilla minus one. That's the other one. Yeah, that one looked cool. I mean that that one was like the one that's like actually like in Japan. Mm-hmm. Japanese director, but I just I can't get into it. I but felt similarly. I was like, I wanted to watch it because I'm like, that sounds like it would be good. Well, because of all the hype, everyone's like, this is the best one, and I just look at the trailer and I'm like, I don't think it's going to be the best one. Right? Yeah. And you're like, and you and you think back to yourself, and you're like, there's so many Godzilla films. Like, how could this be the best one out of all of them? Yeah, I'm not going to see it. Look at this. Yeah, it's fucking hilarious, right? The bar is full. It's fucking hilarious. Did you change your own oh, bang you mother? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's just some Irish bar. <laughs> is that a random food on X? A bossy? Oh, is that? Okay. Yeah, this is Perry. Oh, yeah, let's see. <laughs> there you go. Play that Kanye. Wait, hang on a second. This is like such like old post though. Like I thought, like where's all of his new Those recent posts? Pinned. What? Aren't they pinned? How many posts does he have pinned? How many how many posts can you pin? I don't know. No, this is uh, oh, this is because I'm not even signed in. This is why. Okay. Uh-oh. Yeah, when you're not signed in, it doesn't show you up to date. Okay. Um, I don't know. I mean, we can call it a, we can call it a cast or whatever, a reaction cast. Yeah, there's just something else I saw earlier that I'm trying to find. Transcend there. I was transitioning when I said that. Transgender. Transgender. <laughs> Trans, oh. Transgender. We'll close on this one. This will be funny. Oh. Just kidding. Oh, are you kidding me? Why is this? That's so weird. Why is this not loading? There we go. No. It's like it's like dead linking. I don't know why. Maybe it's because we have to be logged in. Let's see if you can play this. Where is it? I'm sending it to you. Hi, Wombat. Yo, how am I supposed to put this in here, though? <laughs> Your name means ass. <laughs> nice. Wombat and YP are fighting in the chat. <laughs> Be nice. So how do I put this in here, Kalen? My money's on Wombat. Um, so just like uh, put it in one of your tabs. It like, is. All Wait. right. Now now you have to like cast a tab. You start, start streaming a tab. Okay, Screen yeah. share. Is it working? Yeah. Where in the hell did you find that? Face down as such. Try and solve the set. Oh, baby, fucking please just take me back. I knew my balls to my butthole, baby. Oh, my God. What did I do? 
okay is it just more of the same thing yeah okay that's enough of that <laughs> the way the way the way it says oh my god it's so funny there because it's a uh, it's ai so they have to like <laughs> that's enough of that that's terrible <laughs> There was one more thing that I was going to try to play. Oh, yeah, here we go. <clears throat> Available at your local Goodwill, like a promotional sweatband from a health insurance company, or this partially used VO5 conditioner. Oh, God. This custom mug is perfect for drinking all of your fancy hot beverages, and buying it wouldn't be creepy at all. Classical music fans will pee their pants when they see this very rare CDR containing some Vivaldi music. I would buy it if I could, but right now I am Baroque. These polar fruit jars are $1.99 each. You could buy them at Walmart for $1.76, but then you'd have to dump the fruit yourself. Used aluminum foil is pretty hard to find in stores, so this will not be available for long. It's ultra foil, and there's still some left. You asked for it, and now it's finally here. It's the ceramic car that Jake painted. There isn't another one like it in the entire world. Rich people need calcium too, and there's no classier way to get it than by chugging a can of SpaghettiOs plus calcium. And don't forget to wash them down with a nice warm glass of evaporated milk. This pack of Neutrogena cleansing pads is $2.99, and they're all dried out. Nice! Here's the mix CD from Mike and Melissa's 2002 wedding. Many of you have been looking for this for 22 years. Fans of the Meredith family will enjoy this 32nd annual Meredith Family Reunion shirt. Most of you will remember it as the year they all went to San Diego. You may have missed the 2021 Greco wedding, but you can still get their highly collectible shot glass wedding favor for $1.99. And finally, this three pack of old fart balls is a great find. There's nothing wrong with them, I just wanted to say old fart balls. I've never said it before. Once again, I'm leaving empty handed, but if this video goes viral, I might go back for that wedding CD. Would you have bought any of this crap? Let me know in the comments. Chuck Norris, maybe. <laughs> that's, that's what, that's what uh, passes as good content is just going to Goodwill now, I guess. Mm. All right. Let's, let's, uh, till next time. Until next time, we'll be watching out for the, uh, the great Goodwill debate between candace and ben will it happen what are your bets what what i'm asking you specifically Xvala, do you think this will happen what shapiro this, this, shapiro and owens yeah i'm hoping that we can have a shapiro candace owens versus candace owens jake paul mike tyson back to back same night that would be epic i really that we, we, we would have to have we, we would have to drop the subway surfers family guy side videos for that and just make those like the two side by sides i mean that would be a night to remember for sure i don't know if i'd want it before or after maybe even i don't know i don't know i i just think that that tyson fight could be epic so it depends on, okay. So it depends on who moderates. If there is a moderator who moderates, if it's, so if it's like Rogan's going to call the fight, he could then turn around and moderate the debate right after it. It looks like we're going to have YP versus Wombat too. So I guess we're going to have two of our viewers fighting and duking it out as well. Well, I guess we've just created a lot of confrontation for you guys here in the meme ranch. So Hopefully, you know, you guys can start training up, start uh, getting ready for your uh, to uh, fight out your, your differences. That's what we're all about here. Just like sports, you know, we don't we don't we don't we don't want uh, international conflicts to come between uh, hearty and healthy, uh, friendly comp competition. So uh, we appreciate you guys for watching us tonight and for tuning in to hear uh more about this yes wombat will accept i i have it on good word that wombat will accept this fight uh i happen to, to know wombat so we'll uh yeah we're 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 gonna we're gonna train up wombat and uh yp is gonna y, yp you better be watching out okay we're gonna we're gonna end this cast before our audience kills each <laughs> kills each other <laughs> all right it's on, bro.